the film starts with a scene showing a married couple named Ethan and Faye, accompanied by a servant robot named Lisa, on a trip. However, they have an accident. Then one morning, while having breakfast, Ethan tells Faye that he repeatedly dreamed about their accident. Evan dreams about it but doesn't remember what happens afterwards. Faye says the incident was in the past, and she doesn't want to talk about it. Next, the story shifts to a man named Kessler. He is a police officer from a special department called AC, responsible for enforcing the law against artificial intelligence. Kessler is tasked with finding the whereabouts of a female simulant named Esm. Then Kessler goes to a rental property suspected to be Esm's hideout. When Esm comes out, Kessler uses an identification device to stop her movement. However, Esm turns out to be very strong. When trying to attach a simulant control device, Esm grabs Kessler's arm and beats him. Esm jumps from the fourth floor and escapes, leaving the place. Kessler immediately chases after her. Then he takes an IMP weapon and shoots it in the middle of the road. Suddenly, all simulants within the blast radius of the IMP stop moving, frozen. They are offline temporarily. Finally, Kessler finds Esm at the end of the street and takes her to the office. The next day, Evan had the same dream about the accident again. He tried to ignore it by playing the piano. Evan, who was once a genius piano player, is the person who discovered the brilliant intro to the song Paradise by Coldplay. However, he struggles when he wants to play it for some reason. Meanwhile, at Esm's rental, Kessler searched her room for evidence of what made her act aggressively. The landlord said they never knew Esm was a simulant. Even her neighbor, Casey, didn't know. Casey said they had been friends with Esm for a long time but Esme never showed any strange signs. At the office, Kessler reported to his boss that Esme resisted arrest. This is something robots rarely do to humans. In her room, he also found Esme's diary, which contained heartfelt thoughts and sketches of a man. Esme showed a level of awareness he had never seen before. Meanwhile, at the laboratory, a simulant researcher named Ying found an anomaly while analyzing Esme's intelligence processor. Someone had hacked into the system, removed the security protocols, and then gave full authority to her intelligence. When her memory data was accessed, it turned out Esme had a special relationship with Casey. That night, Kessler went to Casey's apartment but found out Casey had moved. This made Kessler even more suspicious of Casey as if he suspected that the police would investigate him. Then Kessler found a rare book that not just anyone could own and visited the only antique bookstore in the area. Kessler asked the seller to tell him if he remembered the person who bought the book, then showed a sketch of Casey's face. The seller said his name was not Casey but Desmond Han, and coincidentally, Desmond suddenly appeared but ran away as soon as he saw Kessler. The next day, even again dreamed of the accident tragedy that had happened to him. However, no matter how hard he tried, even could never remember what happened after the accident. Feeling sorry for him, Faye confessed that he was a simulant created to resemble and live in Evan's memories after the accident. But Sim even didn't believe it. He felt he was even. His consciousness told him he was human, not a robot. Then Faye showed him the secret room where she kept their robot versions. Faye has a duplicate robot to preserve all the memories they went through into that simulant's memory. Not long after, Faye had a visitor who turned out to be Casey. Faye asked Casey to check Evan's memory. Faye asked if Sim even could be deactivated because, so far, it couldn't meet her expectations of replacing her husband. Casey suggested that Faye rent an apartment for it. Meanwhile, at the office, the CEO of Nexera mentioned that Desmond was a technician in the artificial intelligence development section. Desmond was a genius. However, due to differing views on how to treat Sims, Desmond resigned. The following day, arriving at the apartment, Sim even pleaded not to be left alone in this place. After all, he is her husband's memory. But Faye had no choice, she had to do it rather than deactivate him. Meanwhile, at the office, Kessler checked the CCTV footage to track the vehicle Casey used. However, Casey used a fake license plate so no one could follow him. Kessler asked the computer to record the vehicle's characteristics so that if it was detected at some time, Kessler could find its whereabouts. In Evan's apartment, Lisa came to deliver Faye's beloved piano. Faye intentionally gave it to Evan so he wouldn't get bored and could practice his skills. The next day, Kessler visited Esme and asked why she wouldn't tell where Casey or Desmond were hiding. Esma said she truly didn't know where Casey was hiding, but she admitted Casey was her first love. Kessler then returned her diary book. In his apartment, Sim even kept remembering his past. These memories randomly popped up when Even was daydreaming, which naturally happens to humans. The following day, Even met Casey and asked if he could help him remove his system's limiting protocols. Casey hacked into Even's intelligence processor, removed all the restrictions implanted in him, and restarted his system. After coming back online, Even felt only a little difference. 
Casey told him humans evolve by seeing and learning, just like him. That night, Casey invited Evan to have fun at a nightclub. They met and interacted with many people. Casey didn't realize that CCTV cameras were watching their movements. In addition to identifying Casey, the computer also detected a suspected legal violation, a simulant named Even going without its original owner. Soon after, the CCTV captured a female simulant passing on the same street. This simulant looked like Esmum except her hair color was different. It's possible that this simulant was a clone of Esmum as Esmum was still being held at the headquarters. Apparently, Casey went to the nightclub specifically to meet with Esmum's clone. They were both planning something big. In the middle of the night, they went to the Nexera parking lot, kidnapped one of the scientists, and took him to a place. This person was known as Satish, the head of network security at Nexera. After getting it, Casey implanted a patch or update on the Nexera operating system. He intended to hack the entire network connected to the 6th generation simulant. When the update would be complete in three days, for safety, Casey asked Esm's clone to hide the man somewhere while he would return to the apartment with Evan. The next day, Kessler got a clue from CCD footage showing where Casey's vehicle went. After successfully tracking it, Kessler and his men visited the location. Realizing he was surrounded by police, Esm's clone ran away from his hiding spot, and then Kessler fired an IMP weapon that deactivated him instantly. Then they searched the location. They found a dying man without an identity named Sadish. At the headquarters, Kessler introduced Esm to her clone. He asked Esm to read in to tell him what their secret plan was and the identity of the dying man they were holding. Unfortunately, Esm did not know anything about the clone. The clone said they were preparing something big for will and freedom, then he stood up, triggered the robot stopper device on his neck, and then broke instantly. While at her house, Even secretly visits Faye without letting her know. During his stay at the apartment, Even tries new things, his way of speaking also changes, and his attitude becomes very flexible as if showing that he is human. His behavior reminds Faye of her late husband. Even when Even shows his piano playing, Faye is truly amazed. However, Eva says that Sim Even is a robot and can never replace her husband. Faye's attitude breaks Even's heart. One night, Even comes carrying a flower. Faye asks a man with her to go home first because she wants to settle matters with her husband's robot. Evan begs Faye to accept him back. However, Faye refuses. For her, Evan is already dead. He is just a living memory and an image of her late husband. Not accepting her refusal, Evan gets angry and then leaves Faye. Faye didn't expect an android robot to show anger or disobey its owner. The following day, Faye reported Evan's unusual behavior to Kessler. Hearing this, Kessler asked for the address where Casey was living. Casey was a fugitive wanted by the police, so he hurried over there. However, they left Esme alone. Esme took Ying's phone and told Casey that the police were on their way to his apartment. Meanwhile, in his apartment, Casey was monitoring the progress of an update that would finish in 18 hours. Receiving the warning message from Esme, Casey quickly packed up. He didn't forget to go to Evan's room, asking him to come with him because the police were coming to arrest them soon, but Evan refused. He didn't care about his current problem. He only thought about Faye and how to make Faye accept him again. Then Casey told Evan that it seemed Evan misunderstood the freedom he had been given. Getting human attention requires a process. Inside, Kessler found that Casey had left the apartment, except for the computer devices he couldn't save. Kessler received a report that Esme used Ying's phone to warn Casey. Esme said she would do anything to protect Casey because Casey taught her how to be better. Kessler was even more angry with that nonsense. According to him, machines are still machines and can never have feelings. Then he asked Ying to delete all of Esm's memories and reset her to factory settings. Meanwhile, Casey and Even are hiding in a secluded cabin. In the cabin, Even asked what made the police chase Casey to the point of involving himself. Casey explained that his main mission was the freedom of simulants. He believes simulants deserve equality with humans. Three days ago, he successfully hacked into Nexera's security network and then uploaded a patch or update to the central server. Since the 6th generation, Nexera has connected simulants online to make it easier to monitor them, but this actually made it easier for him to hack in and delete all the restriction protocols implanted in simulants online. While in the apartment, Ying managed to access Casey's computer and discovered that Casey had been collecting data on simulants worldwide, hacking into servers and breaching their systems. Ying asked Kessler to find Casey immediately because only Casey could stop the update. Upon arrival, Kessler greeted Casey, who was pointing a gun, demanding Casey to surrender. Then Casey said it was too late to stop. The update would soon end and infect the global network. Then they struggled for the gun. Both were shot, but Casey did not believe like Kessler.
Instead, Casey released a white fluid indicating he was not human but an android robot. When Kessler was about to disable him, Even struck him, realizing he couldn't do much. Kessler flood followed by Even. Upon entering a building, Even said that no matter how lowly people saw him, he would help if Kessler asked for it, but would he still consider him as Mulan if he agreed to help? Kessler said nothing and then crawled out. Unfortunately, due to losing too much blood, Kessler couldn't survive and died. Seeing Casey was also injured, Even asked what he could do. Casey answered there was nothing. His mission was completed. The simulants appeared to be leaving the house, abandoning their master, even refusing when given orders or being deactivated, meaning the hacking was successful and all simulants gained their freedom. Then Casey told Even not to worry, as Casey had a human colleague who would soon visit him, and this person was the genius scientist who created him, who turned out to be Casey's human version, Desmond Han. Desmond congratulated Casey for completing his mission well. Casey smiled, but soon after, he deactivated in peace. That night, Even went home. Quietly, he went to the swimming pool to meet Faye. Faye asked why Even had come there. Evan said he missed her very much. Faye tried to reach the button behind Even's ear to turn him off, but Even reacted quickly and drowned Faye until she was lifeless. Then Even went to the room where Faye kept her robot version and activated it. This android had all of Faye's memories from her life. Evan wanted to make it his life companion and his fellow simulants. They would understand each other and live happily together. The scene then shifts to an auction where Esmond, who had been reset, is sold to the public. Someone buys her for a very high price, which is on Desmond Hand's orders. This indirectly repeats their meeting. Of course, Esmond doesn't recognize Desmond, but Desmond doesn't mind because, for the second time, Desmond will remove her restrictions and start their love story again. After this hacking incident, the police declare Desmond Hand a fugitive. He is responsible for the simulant rebellion and the death of Special Agent Kessler. Until his death, Kessler never believed that robots could have feelings after his own simulant accidentally caused his child's death. On the other hand, this hacking incident is also considered humanity's most significant failure in using artificial intelligence. It forces the company to recall the simulants from the market. The movie ends.